Good evening, yes, Hello, We are now at the doorstep of the third lecture of uh, minimum, sorry, medium rice building designs and constructions. Today, we will, uh, Professor will be explaining under the title, the design philosophy for a medium rice building of about 10 floors. Professor Eisinger, we appreciate the steps taken forward to share your knowledge about this important area of civil engineering and shouldering the responsibilities as the chairman of the Civil Engineering Sectional Committee for the session 2021 and 22. Dear participants, hope you will explain what he delivers in this valuable lecture and throughout the series about designs and construction of medium and high rise buildings. As I uh, mentioned last time, previous day, please remember that you need to register for each session through MIS, MIS since uh, this is a series of lectures. So enjoy the evening. Over to you, Professor, Professor Jaisinga. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Kamala. Can you all hear me? Oh, very well. Very well. Okay. Today I'm using the phone to for audio and uh, uh, computer for the video. So uh, I'll be doing the lecture again on uh, on uh, the screen, on the whiteboard today as well, because there are many things to be explained, which is easier to explain on the whiteboard by drawing rather than using a PowerPoint presentation. So today again, I will take an example, which is similar to the example I used last time. So it's a building. Having a grids of 7.5 in this direction. I think please share the screen. We can't see. Just one moment. No. No, okay. No, okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Right. This way, we'll have six meters each. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, D, E. This is one, two, three, four. So, uh, in this, now this is a 10 story building. If it's a 10 story building, <clears throat> generally we are allocated about 25% of the area for the service core. So, I'm planning to get lift arrangement like this. And we'll have a, another wall here. Other wall here. So these are lifts. Now, if it is a ten story building, the first thing we have to see is whether the building can twist whether the building can twist. So if you take wind in this direction, that is y direction. We have this wall. Excuse me, Professor. Professor, excuse me. Resist wind. Yeah. Can I disturb you for a moment? Yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. that they can't hear, I don't know whether, I can hear you well, but. I can hear, I can hear. 
some uh, some are not here i think but yeah some some are there no they can't hear yeah but they are i think i also can hear i think so okay then i think uh, let them check their laptops or whatever again yeah that's it yes okay. so i i think the mics may be muted now they can hear can they can you all hear yes you can hear sir yes it's good i think most of them are here yeah, mr pomus so we can continue yeah okay yeah yeah so they can hear yes. so if you take this wide direction these walls are going to bend about an axis of because you know you can see the walls with this in this this way or this way depending on the direction of the wind so if the axis of bending is like this i'll put it this way. we have to see that the centroid of all these walls will lie along this axis so what we do is we calculate x bar is equal to sigma i x divided by sigma i not here and it's second out of area mathematically arrange so naturally the centroid should be on this this axis similarly when you take these walls we like it to the centroid lies somewhere here so for these walls The axis of bending will be like this. Axis of bending will be like this. So what we do is we take y bar is equal to sigma i y divided by sigma i. And when you take when you take that direction, you have to add this wall, this wall, and this wall. And let's say the distance of uh, the length of this wall is x one. then you can calculate the length of that wall then you can calculate the length of that wall and because it's a 10 story building it's like that you know we can go for 225 or at 200 also possible it's a little difficult to concrete so if you go for 225 or 250 walls then it's much easier to concrete you lose only 50 mm or 25 mm but still you'll find that the 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 concreting operation is very easy so if you take this uh, structure we we'll have uh, walls sorry walls and columns so if you take the length of this wall that is 6 meters so we have wall like this 6 meters of length bending about an axis like this and then we have column let's say we have selected the column size of 700 mm by 700 mm now what can you say about 700 by 700 when it comes to earthquake resistance should be pretty okay why last time we said that uh, the beam depth will be only 600 by 600 the width can be about 300 350 or 400 so the beam is smaller than the column so we don't have to worry about where the plastic in forms because plastic in will always form within the beam not in the column which is a better way so we don't have to worry too much about the uh, 
the plastic information as a we select 700 by 700 millimeter for the column sometimes you might find you can manage this 600 by 600 but you might select 700 by 700 because we are not losing very much uh, we are not losing a lot of space if you look at this uh, grid size is six meters by 7.5 meters as we did last time so you can select second division system I'm not going to mark any second review system here because it will confuse, you know, it will add to some little bit of confusion. So you can select the slab system either without beams, second reviews, or with second reviews. It's all totally up to you. But the important point today we have to look is the column is the wall is bending about an axis like that. Column is bending, beam is bending. So I value of is 112th into breadth 0.25 into 6 cube. And here I is 112th into 0.7 into 0.7 cubed. So what can you say about the I value of wall and I value of column? I wall is much, much, much bigger than I call it. So if you look at the deflection of the structure, if it is a cantilever subjected to a dot W, the reflection at the top delta will be a function of W L to the power four divided by K times EI. K you can find from a textbook. So if you if you are using this equation, if I is very big in the wall, IW is very big, what can I say about the delta value? Delta will be very small. Delta will be very small. And then you say delta is so small, delta is so small that we say delta is equal to almost zero. Because it's only 10 story building. That is approximately equal to zero. So you can, there's no lateral deformation. We are going, we, we will have about 10, 15 millimeter deflection because it's a 40 meter tall building deflecting 10 millimeter, very small. So we say building is not deflecting. Building is not moving. So if the building is not moving, why? Wall is not allowing it to move then we say all the lateral loads, all these W will be carried by walls. And the frame carry only the, only the vertical load. Frames will carry only the vertical loads. Now we have simplified the design. Now we have simplified the design to a great extent. Because now all the vertical loads will be carried by the frames. Basically, steps still transfer the loads onto the beams and beams will transfer the loads onto the columns. So frames are carrying the vertical loads. Walls also can carry the vertical loads, but, but when it comes to lateral loads, Almost all the lateral loads are carried by the walls. So we'll find the wall is carrying a load N and a lateral load W, which causes a bending moment M. So the wall will be carrying a bending moment M and an axial load N. So we can do the design first by designing the frame and then designing the wall. On the other hand, we can design the building by designing the frame first and then designing the wall. So either way, we will get the same answer because now we are divided the problem. The problem is all the lateral loads are carried by the walls, all the vertical loads are carried by the frames. And if there's a wall, Instead of a column, then wall also can carry some vertical loads. Anyway, there will be the self-weight of the wall. 
Self made with the wall is carried by the wall. So, so wall will have axial load plus any other load transferred onto the wall. So that is the situation. So let's see how to design the wall first. And it will take y direction. You take y direction. We take y direction. Then we have the second model area as three times i. I is this value. Iw is this value. Three times Iw. Why three times Iw? Because we have this wall, this wall, and this wall. There are three walls. The three walls and a total load of W acting at each, acting as a UDL along the height of the building. So we have to see how to design the wall. So what we can do is, because the load is W, we can straight away say M is equal to, if the height of the wall is H, Height is H, M is equal to WH divided by H by 2 or WH squared divided by 2. Delta times H is the total load, H by 2 is the distance of the centroid. So the total moment will be WH squared divided by 2. And the moment carried by each wall will be. This divided by three, so M by each wall one will be WH squared divided by six. So we have, we have three walls, so each wall will carry WH squared divided by six. WH squared divided by six. And we have to determine this, this, this uh, moment at ultimate limit state. So when you are using uh, Euro codes, the W is multiplied by 1.5. W is multiplied by 1.5, considering it's a variable action. Consider that it is a variable action. Consider that it is a variable action. And in another lecture, I'll show you how to get all these different combinations. Today, we'll not worry too much about it because it's a, it's a lecture on its own, right? So we'll uh, see how the combinations can be formed. But today we we'll simply consider that bin load will be, in load will be multiplied by 1.5. Then we have the dead loads. That is the self-weight. So we multiply it by 1.35, and we can have the wind load acting simultaneously. So we multiply sim uh, the impulse load by 0.7 according to the Euro code multiplied by QK. So it gives a reduction factor because total wind load and total live load cannot act together. So we have the dominant action and the second reaction. Now in this case, second, dominant action is the wind. And oh, so I mean, we, have, we get 1.5 times wind. And we also have second reaction and <laughs> impulse load. So we get 0.7 times 1.5. For the dead load, we always get 1.35. Which means, now we know the value of N, we know the value of M. So if you know the value of N and M, the important question is, how do you find the reinforcement? How do you find the reinforcement? This is a wall, this is a wall. We know the overall moment, we know the overall axial load. And how do you find the reinforcement? Now I'm going to erase the board. So if you want, if you want little time to take down notes, please tell me. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, I'm going to erase it. 
because I want to, I want little space to show you how the reinforcement can be can be calculated. So we have a win, uh, combination 1.35 dk plus 0.75 times 1.5 qk, and the win load is multiplied by 1.5 because win load is dominant now. But we can have another load combination where the imposed load is dominant, win load is 0.5 times 1.5, 50% of win load plus full live load. It's also possible. So I'm going to erase this all. Because we know the win, the all the loads. Now you can calculate then you can have numerical values. Then we have a shear wall, which is six meters of length, which is bending about an axis like this. Always you can use right hand corkscrew rule to find how the how the walls bend, about which axis the walls bend. And then this length is six meters. Now you, to, you can make another assumption. That is, you know, this is a long wall, tall wall, 40 meters of height, six meters of length. Then we assume that this is going to behave as a column. Going to behave as a column. And what we can do is we can find you can make use of the column interaction chart, NOBH, MOBH squared, and we get charts like this, 0.4%, 1%, 2%, and so on. So what we do is we select a certain area, something like 0.5 meters for concentrating all our reinforcement. At the edges, ends, we consider a length of 0.5 meters. So the effective depth will be this height, D, will be D will be 6.0 minus 0.25 meters. And then you can find the DOH ratio, which will come close to 0.9. So based on that, you can you have to select the column interaction chart. So there are column interaction charts for different values of DOH, but in a long wall, it's most likely to be close to 0.9. So based on this, we calculate NOBH, MOBH squared, and then we select a point on the appropriate column interaction chart. And then we say, they're going to write that amount of reinforcement. And where do you have to write that amount of reinforcement? That is at the bottom, that is at the bottom. So if you want to reduce the reinforcement, we can do the tall wall, 40 meters tall, you can select different sections and calculate N and M at each level. And then based on that, you can reduce the reinforcement. Based on that, you can reduce the reinforcement. So let's say we find that we need 0.4% reinforcement. Let's say we find that we want 0.4% reinforcement. 0.4% reinforcement. So we say 100 is over BH is equal to 0.4% or 0.4. And then from that, you can calculate S. And then what we do is we provide 
half of a sphere is a is divided by two. The remaining half here, like, like what we do in a column. So we concentrate the reinforcement at the ends, and we provide half the reinforcement we calculate here at the corners. Then you are asked, what are we going to do for the rest? For the rest, we are going to provide. The Eurocode says provide 0.2 percent reinforcement. 0.2 percent reinforcement, the vertical direction. Whereas the British code earlier used to say provide 0.4 percent reinforcement. Sometimes you find that 0.2 percent reinforcement is too light. So generally in Sri Lanka, I mean in the Sri Lankan national election also. We will provide 0.4 percent reinforcement as the minimum. So we can provide 0.4 percent reinforcement as the minimum, 0.2 percent on each face vertically, and horizontally we can provide 0.25 percent reinforcement on both faces, both faces 0.25 percent reinforcement horizontally. Now you can see the middle part. The reinforcement is already provided using the minimum rule and at the ends the reinforcement is provided by considering that we behaves as a column so now we have provided the reinforcement in vertical direction and horizontal direction now the design of the wall is over at the ground level we can repeat the calculation at any level you want and you can reduce the amount of reinforcement needed as you go up. As you go up. So this way, we can easily find the reinforcement in the wall by making an assumption that the wall is going to behave as a column. Wall is going to behave as a column. Any questions on this? So there is one question in the chat box. Yeah, what is the question? Do we need a do we need to consider uh, notional load or imperfection load with the wind load? Yes, always you have to consider a notional load. A notional load is given in the in the euro code as well. In the British code, it is a 0.0, 0 0.15% of the uh, dead load that we call 0 0.0015, 0.15% of the dead load. But in the new code also, a similar rule is given. Similar rule is given. So you have to use that rule and calculate the value. The values come closer and always consider notional load. That is correct. You have to consider the minimum as the minimum of max, the value uh, maximum of notional load or the wind load. Whichever is higher, you will use it. But notional load, you don't multiply it by a factor. Notional load is whatever the value you get from the calculation, but you don't have to multiply it by a factor. Whereas uh, wind load, you have to. So you have to, you, you, it's, it's better if you consider notional load and wind load all together. So, so the computer program, uh, computer package, if you are using a computer package, it will automatically select which one is more critical. Otherwise, you have to look at the load magnitudes and decide which one is more critical. Uh, it's true that we, national load should be used. Any uh, other question? Uh, yeah, can't we consider the uh, combined second moment of inertia of the whole uh, uh, core wall? Because here you consider only the major direction, uh, minor direction you didn't consider. So, can we consider the combined? Uh, but 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 uh, the, the, if you consider, if you consider the if you consider the the, the way that it's twisting, it is easier to consider only the major direction, the walls in the major direction only. Because you know it's a ten-story building. 
and uh, the the walls in the other direction will contribute very little unless the building is twisting if the building is twisting the walls in the other direction can make a significant contribution otherwise you know when you consider the length of the wall the dominant dominant behavior will be due to the length of the wall so generally if i mean the, what you have to see is you know how much accuracy you need for the calculations and the gain you get the gain will be very little and you will be just unnecessarily wasting your time on doing very serious calculations so that's why you know it's important that we uh, we can go when you are doing manual calculations generally we do not consider the walls in the other direction we consider the walls only in the dominant direction and then do the manual calculations so this is a manual calculation on the other hand if you want to get a more accurate result you can make a 3d model for the 10 story building and then automatically the model will look take account of the the presence of co boxes so what what we call is you know these are called co boxes it's a co which is acting like a box so automatically the computer program will consider the effect that there is a co box but when you are doing manual calculations there is no need and the 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 error that you get in the answer is very minor so there is no point in wasting our time trying to do very accurate calculations when you consider that design itself is a very approximate process why do i say it's a very approximate process the only thing that i that i can assess with a reasonable degree of accuracy is the self weight can i estimate the impost loads no i cannot so i make a guess can i calculate the wind loads again the answer is no so we make a guess based on some guideline given in a code so if you are guessing so many things then we we include the partial factor of safety to look into the uncertainty of these things that we have guessed that's why we have a higher factor so when so many things are approximate what is the point in being very accurate with the sheer wall calculations no point so always you have to look at how much accuracy we need in design and if you think by being little more accurate you are not going to save anything don't 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 do those calculations they are useless calculations do a simple model where you will understand the exact behavior and then if you want a very accurate result allow it to a three dimensional computer program like etraps because etraps is written for buildings and it can take account of all this can so basically uh, you have to look at the lecture less than 5 stories no shear wall what up to 10 floors another method when i go but again you use a simple model like a 2d model converting the everything to a 2d model whereas when i am going for a 20 story or more now it's time to be a little more accurate and for those things we will do a 3d model on computer and it is not a waste of time it's a, it's worth while exercise but trying to do a 3d model for a 10 story building knowing very well that the deflections are going to be so small interactions are going to be so small you will be just wasting your time uh, i i consider yeah i will consider the foundation design much more much more seriously than the design of the superstructure because finally all these loads should be transferred to the foundation now we have a big problem problem is do we know do we need a pile foundation or a rough foundation that is a big question because sometimes pile foundation 
this might have only few few piles but it might cause a lot of money because it pile foundation means lot of mobilization lot of mobilization so we might have to consider a rock foundation although it's a 10 story building so if you have right right partitions there's a good chance that a rock foundation may be possible but you might have to consider a weight compensated raft where the raft is actually the building will have one or two basements and then the bottom slab of the basements will act like a the bottom slab of the basement will act like a raft otherwise you will find that the soil strength is not sufficient so you may need one or one and a half uh, one one basement plus uh, one semi basement type of situation provided the water level is sufficiently low provided the water level is sufficiently low you might go for that kind of solution so one of the assumptions that we take in this model is the shear walls are connected to the foundation and the rotation at this level is almost zero at the floor level is almost zero and assuring that with the foundation design will be a bigger responsibility than considering the trying to be very accurate with the superstructure modeling because it is not going to do much in this particular structure the reason is there are plenty of shear walls and the reflections are very small so all the things will be dominated by the uh, the behavior of the shear wall where the shear wall deflection will be very, very small like 5 to 10 mm which can again be ignored and the frame will be designed separately frame will be designed separately have i answered your question Yes, can I get some feedback? Uh, have I answered the question, or you have any other question? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in a wall, uh, so you have designed uh, as a column. So in a column, yeah. so we uh, do restraining of alternative bars, uh, which are one hundred fifty millimeter away from a restrained vertical bar. Do we apply that uh, same concept for this wall reinforcement? no wall reinforcement that concept will be equal if the if the amount of reinforcement in that particular area is more than 2% so so we calculate this concentrated reinforcement then calculate the amount of reinforcement in this particular area if it is more than 2% then you have to ensure that you detail it exactly as a column that like exactly as a column but in my case how you know i know for sure the first floor and the second floor these areas will be heavily heavily stressed so when i am detailing for about two floors i may consider a reinforcement arrangement like this so i'll be confining these edges to us as why in case of an earthquake where which 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 part of the wall will get the maximum effect the bottom part will get the maximum effect and again in the even in the bottom part the ends will get maximum effect so no harm in having highest higher confinement to have higher confinement about two floors or three floors you can have additional restraints right and anyway because it's it is it has been designed as a column don't harm in providing this concentrated reinforcement uh, the under confining reinforcement or the full height because in case of an unknown unforeseen situation some of the reinforcement might be mobilized might be mobilized Otherwise, theoretically, you don't need 
what you need is only the space of mass where which means for every uh, 0.4 meters or so you will have a bar connecting the two mats of red you will have additional bar connecting two mats of red that's all you need but uh, because uh, you know you need only few links like this i mean it, it's not going to cost us much money but when it comes to the safety enhancement the benefits are very high because of that you might consider it's worth providing the the edge restraining reinforcement over the full height of the building over the full height of the building have i answered the question yes sir thank you yeah, okay any any yes. other question yes sir, yeah, one more question uh, one more question uh so here you are assuming that the geometric center and the stiffness center is same so due to the same. architectural Basically, arrangement no 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 i am not assuming I, i have selected the walls in such a way that it becomes that way yeah yeah uh, due to the architectural arrangement if we can't make it uh, coincide uh, is it okay is it recommended to design with a twisting mode no it is okay if it's a small building it's okay to design it as a as a uh, in the twisting mode but uh, if it is about 10 story building and you you cannot do anything it's okay but when you are going beyond 20 floors 10 floors you have to keep in mind the stuff belongs to the structural ring <coughs> so one way the other you will do calculation and tell the architect i want some extra walls because i want to balance the building i don't like a twisted but if it is a small building seven story to 10 story type and architect is adamant that he cannot give anything you want one way or the other finish the structure then what i do is i will go for a box why the box i connect this with a big beam big beam and i'll put some beams here and i'll make it very stiff box what will happen now it's a very stiff beer box even if twists it can it can take the twisting very well it can take the twisting very well so because of that reason if the architect is adamant and he he doesn't understand the basic fundamentals but still you want to work with the architect take some precautions but don't compromise if the structure is more than 10 floors you must be the in charge of the structure architect is in front in charge of the facade architect is in, in in charge of the facade because he he makes it beautiful whereas when it comes to the structure architect should ask the structural engineer what do you want and then based on that only the architect should uh, do the planning or oh, the architect can do the planning with a flexible mind that you know structural engineer asks for something extra because building is twisting the architect should be willing to uh, give that option otherwise it's too dangerous there are buildings where the problems are persistent because engineer has given to the request by the architect that is not the way when the building becomes taller structure belongs to us facade belongs to the architect so you have to keep that in mind and don't for don't give in too much because you might end up with a bad building and when the bad building develops a bad reputation who will lose uh, the reputation you will lose the reputation so it's not worth so you will insist that you know that uh, the building is uh, you are allowed to balance the building you are allowed to balance the building so that the building is not twisting on the other hand what you do is then you will make a 3d model of the building and show the architect this is how you this building is going to behave and do you like that kind of twisting behavior the the chances are architect might back down and say okay i'll you do you select the structure i'll i'll do the architectural part or the facade around the structure rather than i am trying to dictate 
where the structure members come. The architect cannot decide where the structure members will come. It has to be designed by the, the decided by the structural engineer, then a general arrangement drawing is drawn. The architect can approve the locations uh, and ensure that the, the strong elements that you have selected will not coincide with the, the vision of the architect. So, so you can, the architect can work with the structure engineer in harmony. So always you have to, uh, otherwise you will tell the architect what's going to happen. And even if he can't understand mathematics, don't use too much mathematics, but uh, show, tell the architect how the structure is going to behave and how why it's twisting and so on. Then he might actually, he or she might uh, help you to uh, come up with the bit. Is that clear? If nothing can be done, I'll make some of these super strong, super strong, so that even if the wheel twists, it twists very little, so that nobody will feel that it's twisting. Is that clear? Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So design of wall is very, very simple. Now we have to design the, design the frames for vertical loads. Uh, shall I move to design of frames with the vertical, with, with the vertical loads? Yes, sir. Yeah. So can I, so can I yeah, any other questions? Uh, sir, uh, then from where we can find this, uh, Column interaction uh, curves. Uh, should we have uh, uh, another set of curves uh, which are Actually, not available? Uh, there's a structural engineers. Uh, the institution of structural engineers has issued a manual, and in that manual you can find all the interaction curves for Europe. And uh, the, the, there are other interaction curves. They you freely downloadable from internet. You can download it on the internet. The uh, interaction charts are available on internet. You can download it. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Another one. But, yeah, but, but the, the, those interaction charts uh, will have FCU. The so F F F C K term also, right? But it doesn't matter. They, they all they are all the same because rather than developing different charts for different concrete strengths, they have developed one chart up to fifty megapascal concrete. Any other question? There are a few. Uh, I will read out. I, I think. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, how do we select the depth of the wall sections of the two ends? One question. Other one. Uh -huh. uh, do we need to consider slenderness in these wall designs when designing as column? Ah, uh, good questions. Yes. So basically, it's a little bit of judgment because you know you don't like too small and too big. So if it is six meters, you can you might consider even 0.75 meter or 0.8 meter ends rather than 0.5 meter ends. So it's totally up to you because when the column is behaving, the it will go into a plastic behavior, not the elastic behavior. So in the plastic behavior, what matters is uh, where the where the where the main reinforcement are. So is, is not an elastic behavior. The At the failure load, the wall will have a plastic behavior. So it's a cracked wall, wall because the wall is cracked. What you need is a concentration of reinforcement at the ends. So it is so purely arbitrary. So you might, you might design the same wall with 0.8 meter. And another person might design it with 0.7 meter. I would say 0.5 meters is the about bare minimum. You, I, I, even I would, I would, I would consider something like 0.7 or 0.8 meter. But you will not consider two meters because too much. Two meters is too much. So anything up to one meter is okay. Any, any up to one meter is okay, but I would prefer something like 0.8 meters because it's only a small building, 10, 10 floors only, and the walls are six meters of uh, length. So because of that reason, I might consider something like 0.8 meter or even one meter is okay. That is the first question. 
second question is how about the wall buckling but if you consider this building it's a brass building in a brass building the effective height is about 0.85 times the clear height and when you consider that you'll find that the walls are all behaving as short walls because you can go up to a ratio of Aren't here, I think, Professor. Professor, unmute your phone. Can't hear. So we can't hear you, sir. Professor, we can't hear you. I think we he even don't hear us. Yeah, yeah. Madam Kamala, can you tell him? Unmute your phone. Uh, Are you muted now? No, no. From the meeting, from his phone. Recording in progress. Well, sir, last five minutes we couldn't hear you. The point we talk about the slenderness, we didn't we didn't hear. Again he's muted. Again his phone is muted. Uh. No. Yeah, yeah, you can hear me, right? You can hear. Yeah. Now can, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because there's a small problem. Uh, I have been disconnected by the phone. Yes. Right. Okay, so I will draw this. Now the frame. Now the frame, 
So one of these frames, so what we do is we select a simplified subframe and wait. So I'm going to make a simplified subframe by adding fixity at these locations. So the simplified subframe will look like this. To look like this. So I can go for pattern loading. That means uh, in uh, Eurocode, we consider all the spans are loaded by 1.35 GK. For dead loads, all the spans are loaded. But when it comes to the the live load, we can say, here we get the live load, here we get the live load, and so on. So Eurocode actually specifies one thing, the rational ratio of UK specifies the ordinate to, uh, the, the, the ordinate to spans loaded maximum. So in uh, Sri Lanka national ratio, also we have gone along with the UK pattern, UK method. So we can still use uh, the all the spans loaded full, or ordinate spans loaded with maximum, and others are not loaded. That can be uh, decided. So how do we analyze this? Easiest thing is to analyze it using. A uh, simple software like SAP 2000. So you can make a model of this subframe on, uh, on SAP 2000. And then the most important thing is here you have to make sure rather than fixity, it is like a joint like this. That means this particular joint can't move, but it can move vertically. It can move vertically. It's important that you assign a joint like that. Don't assign a fixed joint. Assigning a fixed joint means the column is fixed. It's hanging from the sky, which is wrong. So always you have to make sure the column joint at the top will be a moving joint, not a fixed joint, not a fixed joint. It's important. Always allocate a moving joint in the vertical direction. But what happens is all this will show and if this point is fixed, then the frame will start hanging from the top of the column, which is wrong. This is not going to happen. So you have to introduce a join like this. So you'll create pattern loading, use SAP 2000, create bending moment envelope, and do the calculation. Again, when you are creating the bending moment envelope, you can consider moment redistribution, redistribution of moments. So how that happens is you will make sure that what if you get a bending moment diagram like this, <clears throat> you can say only 80% of the moment will act here. So that means you change. The origin of the line, bending moment diagram, we can't hear again, sir. Can't hear again. Professor can't hear again.
you can hear it's a Excuse me, Professor. They can't hear. His connection is not there. He is not there. His connection is there, but the phone is not there. Ah, that's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. His phone is gone. On gone, yeah. Screen is there, but the, his voice connection connected is gone. How can you explain? Uh, you have to inform the server only. I'm again getting a small problem with the. Ah, uh, now it's okay. Yeah, uh, can you hear me now through the uh, computer? Yeah, now it's clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, today it's a dialogue from the phone is disconnecting. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't Recording in progress. No, no, it's mm. Sorry, sorry about that trouble. Again, uh, there was a small technical problem. I have been disconnected due to not sure which is the problem. Mm. I think you have not heard uh, the part on moment redistribution. Uh, from that uh, menu moment diagram, you can repeat again, Rosa. Yeah, okay, right, okay. So what happens is, courts allow up to about 20, 20 30% redistribution, but generally I don't, I would not do more than 20% of 20% redistribution. So redistribution means we are reducing the bending moment or the support and then allowing it to be compensated by increasing the bending moment. In so basically what you do is, you calculate 80% from the top and mark a point and get the baseline acting, at, acting through that point. So that way, you can very easily use a graphical method and calculate the value of the vending moment relevant for your calculations. So rather than doing any uh, numerical calculation, you just use graphics and do the select the values. That's very easy. So the whole idea of re moment distribution is the Beams cannot collapse by forming plastic hinges because beams are supported by the column. So at the, sub, at the support, there's no point in designing for the full moment. You can design for about 80% of the moment where the remaining part of the moment is now taken by the span sections. So you can see the span sections will now be designed for a higher moment than early. But span sections are very efficient in carrying moment because they behave as flange beams. So because of that reason, there's no harm in transferring uh, part of the moment at the support to the span. So basically, you will go for pattern loading, generate bending moment diagram, and then find the critical moment diagrams, and then you can reduce the moments in critical moment diagram. The most critical moment diagram will be all spans loaded with maxima. 
And once you select that, you can reduce it by about 20%. So you can do moment distribution once you get the bending moment values. And generally, uh, where, where do you get a failure in a beam? You never get a failure here because it's supported. Always you get the failure here. So when you calculate the reinforcement, will you provide exactly the answer or you, will you provide a little more reinforcement in the span sections? I would always provide a little more reinforcement in the span sections because nothing can go wrong when you provide a little extra reinforcement in the span sections. The reason is any failure in the beam will occur in the span sections. So I would like to have a slightly higher factor of safety where the failure can occur. And I will go for a lower factor of safety at the places where the failures cannot occur. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So, yes, so this is this is uh, you know not a normal design where you know these are design where you like to assess the risk and take some extra precautions that are not given in the code. That are not given in the code. So you take some extra precautions that are not given in the code, and that extra precaution is you will over design the span section slightly. Whereas you will do moment distribution to a reasonable level over the support. That is that is always there. But codes do not say assess the risk. And if they if you anticipate any high risk, then provide some extra precaution. That part is missing in the codes, but when I design, I always consider anywhere, any place where the failures can occur, I will take on my own accord, I will take few precautions like uh, using higher, higher level of reinforcement, slightly higher level of reinforcement. Is that clear? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, that uh, if we consider that earthquake load, so yeah. if we uh, redistribute the movement at uh, Columbian Junction, so then the reinforcement density reduces, then that yes. uh, plastic hinge can be occurred at the Columbian Junction due to that earthquake load? No, no, actually uh, the, the column section is bigger than the beam. So always uh, the plastic hinge will Professor, we can't hear you. Cannot hear.
the earthquake. Is that right? Uh, professor couldn't hear for some time now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, there was a question on earthquakes. Huh. And uh, what will happen when you do the redistribution in case of an earthquake? So what happens is, with redistribution, we are reducing the bending moment at the support, and the bending moment in the beam is reduced. by about 20%. Then the question is, what will happen in an earthquake? In an earthquake, still the hinge will form in the beam because beam is a smaller cross section than a column. I deliberately to still the, the plastic hinge will form in the beam. So, to have satisfactory behavior with respect to the plastic hinge, what is important is the confinement provided by the links, not the longitudinal reinforcement. So by reducing the longitudinal reinforcement or the support, you are not going to reduce the earthquake resistance. The earthquake resistance is confinement that you have provided at the support. So if you have provided reinforcement at about 75 millimeter centers, that is the rule I always use. For about 0.6 meters, I use reinforcement, T8 reinforcement at 75 millimeters. Automatically, you will find the confinement is high. Because the confinement is high, the behavior of the building where the redistribution has been undertaken and no redistribution has been done, both will be the same. The reason is it's not going to uh the 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 land is not going to govern anything it's a it's a transfer because of that reason i generally have a rule the rule is i would like to have for about 0.6 meters i like to have t8 bars at uh, 75 millimeter centers so that means a lot of t8 bars a lot of confinement then the earthquake resistance will be there. Have I answered the question? Yes. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, code has a limitation on redistribution amount. Uh, if the yeah. if the frames provide lateral stability, then the code is yeah. code says the minimum maximum amount is ten percent. That is that is unbraced. The frame providing lateral stability means it's an unbraced structure. But here it's a braced structure. Because we are having shear walls, it's a brace structure. If it's unbraced 10%, it's if it is braced, you can go for up to about 30%. But generally, I would like to stay somewhere around 20%. Is that clear? Uh, clear, sir. And another thing, sir, when we do the, yeah. when we design for the span, are we going to consider a flange section to design a span? Or if you use rectangular section design, you still we need, need to provide additional reinforcement. No, I mean I would I would always go with a flange beam design for the span because it's very economical. I will not do design the span section as a rectangular section because it's going to behave as a flange beam. I will always design it as a flange beam. Is that clear? Clear, sir. Clear. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. So any other specific question? Yeah, go ahead. Hello, sir. Sorry? Uh, sir, uh, when uh, the beam has uh, different section, that means one beam, one continuous beam has uh, different sections. Yes. Uh, the, is, it, uh, is it good or, uh, and uh, the next question is, uh, if, if there's a different section due to the architect purpose, uh, um, doing moment redistribution is, uh, uh, be good. Actually, even if you have different section, uh, if you want, because when you are calculating the 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 bending moment values, already uh, this uh, variable section is taken into account. All by the computer. Different beam sizes. 
So even if there's a different meme sizes, there's no harm in doing a moment reduced solution. But uh, I might stay somewhere around 15%. Rather than going for something at 20 or 25%, I might stay somewhere around 15%. Because uh, now uh, the, the structure itself is not very consistent. You know, we have in different, different, different sections. So, so, so there may be anchoring problems and all that. We really don't know how you are going to detail it. So better to keep the moment resolution at a certain level so that uh, the not too much moment is transferred to the span sections. But you can certainly do the moment distribution. It does not matter because when you are doing the bending moment uh, analysis, aut automatically the computer program will take into account the different sizes of the beams. It's not a problem. Is uh, that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, another one, sir. Yeah. Then uh, in, in this, in, within the span, uh, if the section is changing, uh, will it cause any local failure? That means uh, not a trapezoidal change, it's a sudden change. What do you mean by that? Uh, within the section, in, within a in span, span, you are having different sections. Uh, that means uh, uh, rather, than, rather than changing, the uh, section is changing bit, uh, within the column, it's changing at the middle, middle of the span. Ah, so you have some architectural reason, you are having two, two different sections. Yes. Is it in that is case? It, uh, case now, when, when, uh, no, in that case, when you are modeling, you will model it as a smaller beam. When you are modeling, you will do the modeling as if the whole beam is a smaller beam, not the bigger beam. Is that clear? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay. Right. Sir, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, so yes. should we design our uh, shear walls as brace one or unbrace one? No, because you are having shear walls in two different directions, X and Y. All the shear walls will now be braced. But if you have shear walls only in one direction, then, then you are asking for trouble. I will ensure that always I, I will brace the building in both directions. Right. Is that Thank clear? Thank you, yeah. sir. And the yeah. one said now these beams are a little deeper and wide. And when when they connected, uh, when they are connected to this uh, uh, 200 millimeter or 225 uh, millimeter thick uh, shear walls, mm -hmm. is there any problems with the uh, overall behavior? The slabs. I mean, so when you are uh, connecting the slabs to the wall, I mean, sir, beams to the wall. Slender wall. A beam to the wall. Beam to yeah. the wall uh, at some sub places instead of the column you are having the wall. That is your question. Is that right? Uh, so wall thickness is uh, uh, smaller than the beam width. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't matter of... because 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 uh, the, if you can provide enough bearing, uh, in the in the case of wall, uh, now we can see if you take here. Now there are walls in both directions, so they, it will not be a big problem. But if you have, if you don't have the wall in the other direction, then you have to be a little careful in detailing. Generally, we don't consider because you know wall is a very strong element. So if you connect the beam reinforcement and send the beam reinforcement into the wall, there's very little chance for it to fail. So because of that reason, we will not really worry too much about this connection. Because we consider it's a proper connection. The the it, the re, the uh, the answer comes from the fact that we are going to uh, you know uh, provide uh, sufficient reinforcement in the beam so that it will, it will, it can be properly connected to the wall. So because of that reason, I don't anticipate any problem there. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So make sure the beam reinforcement continue into the wall. That is the important point. So, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, so, sometimes, uh, uh, actually, uh, I want to know whether it is necessary to go for uh, higher stiffness uh, um, uh, beam than column uh, always, because sometimes we have to select uh, the dimensions of the beam. Uh, compared to the column, uh, having lesser, uh, uh, having yeah, some yeah, higher actually, stiffness actually, than column. Yeah. Actually, actually, what you have to make sure is 
Columbus larger than the V, not vice versa. So, so you select the size of the beam, and last time I explained how to select the size of the beam. I said, you know, under different situations, uh, you know, even for a higher spans, we use uh, uh, say 600 millimeter overall depth, and then uh, if you have any problem in the other direction, uh, then then you can actually uh, select a suitable beam size. So basically, the whole idea is ensure the column is bigger than the beam. Column is bigger than the beam, not okay. vice versa. Okay, so thank right. you. Uh, another question. So then, then, then you can confine the failure of, to the beam. Plasting occurs in the beam, and beam is okay because beam has a high, higher capacity in the span section, so it's okay to have uh, the plastic hinge forming in the beam. Yeah. But if the plastic hinge forms in the column, the column can start uh, moving and losing the stability. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Like a yeah. bigger column and a smaller beam. Yeah. Now we are approaching yeah. eight thirty, and if you have, I think we can take only about one or two questions more. So basically, uh, once you know the bending moments and shear forces, you can destroy the reinforcement in the frames and the columns. Uh, you know, from this uh, uh, frame analysis, you know, column uh, column loads can, you know, the column load transferred onto the uh, the, the the load transfer of the column at each flow can be determined by using the subframe. And based on that, you know, you can do a quick manual calculation and find the load on the, the maximum load on the at the base base level. Yeah. Because you know, you can always find the load that is transferred onto a column by the beams when you do the subframe analysis. So based on that, you can make a Estimate of the column load. So otherwise, you can go for the tributary area and do the calculation. You can yeah. go for the tributary area and do the calculation. So the tributary area and do the calculation. That is yeah. also possible. Yeah. yeah okay. So thank you, sir. Uh, another question, uh, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, when we uh, the, when we change the uh, redistribution level. And the point of counterflexure uh, uh, get changes. Uh, how can uh, how can get some idea? No, no, it's it's a, not... yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a only a generally it's a only a minute minute change. Uh -huh. So so Eurocode gives a lot of guidelines on those things. So basically, uh, I mean, what you have to say is uh, why we why we dis why we don't want to continue too many reinforcement across the column is we have congestion of reinforcement, <laughs> right? Yeah. So 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 if you think the point of counterflexure is changing, you can actually yeah. make it uh, make it uh, make the what uh, the cutoff points. You can adjust the cutoff points, reinforcement yeah. cutoff points. So, yeah. so in such situations, uh, I would rather, uh, rather than trying to do a lot of accurate calculations, I would rather use a, a simple rule. Hmm. Now, one rule I generally use is uh, I will make sure that all the bottom reinforcement continues up to about point three, within 0 0.3 meters of uh, the support. Within 0 0.3 meters of the support, then all these uh, uh, minute problems will be looked after. Did you yeah. get the point? I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I, will, yeah, yeah. I will ensure because yeah, we, are, we are not saving a lot of steel by, uh, you know, by trying to find the, uh, by finding the exact cutoff point. We are not saving yeah. a lot of steel. Yeah, okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. The reason for asking that question is we don't know how can it affect to the service criteria. No, basically, uh, no. if you if you if you continue the reinforcement, then then there's no way you can, the service criteria. Is that clear? I mean, what you do is just when you are currently in the reinforcement, bottom reinforcement, but no yeah. need to be uh, uh, generous when you are currently in the top reinforcement. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. So basically, in the beam, uh, I would be a little generous with the bottom. Yeah. Because any any failure in bottom reinforcement, it'll end up with a crack. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, That's yeah. why I said, uh, you know, we I like to do a risk risk based analysis, risk risk based analysis, not just analysis. I will not believe in the results, but I will look at how the structure behave, where things can go wrong, at places where things can go wrong. I'll take, I'll put some additional reinforcement and ensure those places will never ever fail. That's my philosophy. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Professor, yeah, 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 yeah. Professor, there was a recent situation from Sakuni for some yeah. long time. So shall we ask her to ask her? Yeah, question? yeah, of course, of course, yes. Uh, it's okay. I, it's okay because I we didn't hear. That's why I just raised hand. Someone test. All right, right. Okay. Ah, okay. Now it's okay. Okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. Then uh, shall shall we wind up? Uh, because I have covered almost everything. Okay. I mean, I have showed you that it, it can be done easily. Once you understand how it behaves, it can be done. But but this philosophy will not be applicable for 15, 20, 15 to 20 story buildings. So next day we will think how to deal with 15 to 20 story buildings. Right? But what you have to keep in mind is, you know, if you want, you can do a computer model for all these structures and do the get the answers. But sometimes, you know, when it's a small building, people ask questions suddenly. Then you can do a quick set of calculations like this and come up with answers, right? But uh, otherwise, you know, always go for a 3D model and do the analysis, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's worth knowing how to deal with a small building, a small base building, uh, so that, you know, you can, uh, even when you don't have a computer, or you, want, you don't have access, or you are in a hurry, you can always beat the computer by doing calculations like this. But after that, you know, once you sort, sort the problem out, you can go for a computer model and do the proper calculations. But the important thing is to under, understand how the structures behave. So with that, shall we conclude? Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Sir, is it necessary to continue beams through the shear walls or can we stop at the end of the... Shear no, no need, no need to continue, but, but, but you have to provide sufficient anchorage into the shear wall. As a fixed joint. To, to ensure that the, the joint behaves properly. Otherwise, okay, otherwise it will become a simply supported pin joint. You don't mm. provide the reinforcement properly. Thank and then you, it will sir. transfer higher bending moment to the, to the span. Excuse me, sir. One last question. Thank Hello. you, sir. Yeah. Yes? Uh, so, uh, do we need to, uh, the bottom line of uh, strong column weak beam uh, can, uh, can condition is uh, whether we, uh, the stiffness of the beam and the column, IOL yes. ratio, or yes. every time do we have to consider the larger column and the... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, basically, the, 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 basically columns will not form fingers because column has a bigger section in compression. So, because of that... Uh, Columns, uh, if the column is large, uh, always the hinge will be in the B. Columns will not uh, form hinges because most of the area of the column is in compression. So always uh, the hinge will form in the B, not in the column. So have I answered your question? Uh, I have one doubt. Uh, if, yeah. if the column has a higher IOL ratio and the B mm -hmm. has less IOL ratio, do we need to consider the IOL ratio or the dimensions? No, it is the dimension. It is the dimension. Because, because you know, column, the, we have to, that's why I said column, although column is longer, the IOL ratio is different, but still when you consider reinforced concrete, beam concrete is cracked, column concrete is almost uncracked. Because most of the column is in compression, column concrete, column, uh, column com concrete is uncracked. So because of that reason, always the tendency is to form the uh, the plastic hinge in the beam. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Is there any more conclusion? Yeah. One more is there. Yeah. yeah, one more is there from Umapati. I think. Uh, are you there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, Umapati. Yeah. 
uh, for the the coval, if if we confidence about the bracing on all both all direction is firm, can we consider mm. as a box section uh, when we uh, calculate the second moment of inertia? Is a hollow yes, section. Yes, you can. You can, and in programs like ETAS, you can actually make it happen. But when you are doing manual calculations, it's not worth trying to do so much extra calculations. So why do why you do manual calculations is you want to get quick answers. So in quick answers, so you can get quick answers by doing simple calculations. So don't try to make the calculations very complicated because nobody is going to you know give you more credit these days. Always keep the calculations simple. Thank you. Because if you try to make things complicated, you will never be able to construct buildings like Altair. So there are a lot of complications within the building itself. So if you try to, if you make your calculations also complicated, then it will be impossible. So that's why we go with the 3D model with the proper 3D model method, modeling methods. Program will capture most of this uh, intercepted by the program. So we don't have to really worry about. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, excuse me. Mm, that yeah. each time medial column size is greater than uh, corner column size. Uh, but when I when I do design SAP also um, doing that way, no, sir, then H column also different size. Uh, that's what is the opinion. I really don't like that because, you know, when you are doing the construction, it, it's so easy to have the same column size for all the columns, then, then you can easily interchange the shutters. Otherwise, you have to have so many different sets of shutters. It's not worth. Uh -huh. Right? It's not worth having different column sizes. I would Sir, use the but, same column size. Here. Sir, but load, load this are come different, different. Uh, yeah, it doesn't um, matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. uh, I would rather try to keep the same column size everywhere, uh -huh. unless it's absolutely necessary to have different size. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. So with that, shall we conclude? Uh, I think okay. yeah. Sir, yeah. Can you reduce the column section in top? What is the question? Uh, can you reduce the column section in a top floor? Again, 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 in a 10 story building, I, I might not do it. But with a 20 or 30 story building, certainly yes. Yeah. But in a 10 story building, it's not worth make, trying to make the columns uh, too, too small because uh, even the smallest column you can have will be only about 500 by 500. Yeah. So, so you have to change the shutter and do many things. So I really don't know whether it's worth. That's the same question is in the chat box. I think uh, since you answered the previous question, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So the same question is there in the chat box. Right, right. I think uh, we've done everything. Yes, of course. Yeah. Shall Shall I call Engineer Tri Malitan to the yes, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you are a word of thanks since it's a marvelous uh, with some difficulties, but we managed to do it. So we'll improve next time. Uh, yeah okay yeah Trima? yeah yeah uh, thank you good evening everyone i'm trima Vitan, a member of uh, the knowledge sharing subcommittee of civil engineering sectional committee and it is uh, an honor for me to deliver this word of thanks uh, now today the third lecture of medium rise buildings design and construction explaining the design philosophy for a medium rise building about of about 10 floors has now completed a big thank to you, Professor Jaisinga, for your most worthy lesson delivered today. Also, I thank the organization, organization subcommittees, the presentation and knowledge sharing of Civil Engineering Sectional Committee for this session. I extend my sincere thanks to the ISL for hosting this and the IT teams for your support. Finally, I thank you all uh, our members who participated in this, and I hope you extracted essence of this valuable lecture this evening. Next presentation will be on coming Tuesday for January at 7 p.m. If the time change, so we'll inform you uh, in advance. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very thank much. You, sir. Sure. Thank How you. to get that uh, video?
videos uh, will be uploaded to the YouTube uh, and last two videos also already, you can see it from uh, ISL YouTube channel. This one also will be uploaded very soon. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.